everyone live Facebook number whatever number we're up to let's have a look here eight nine ten live Facebook number ten for the weekend how is your Sunday going I hope you are all having a fantastic day wherever you are in Australia <coughs> oh, excuse me Australia all the world <coughs> You know that happened because I turned the camera on. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Okay, let's get into it. It is Sunday. It is day number three of the Great Australian Craft Show. And it is, today's discount is all about Lindy's Gang Products, Chipboard and Scrap Effects Products. So what I want to show you in this live Facebook, because I'm going to have a bit of a play with some chipboard, ooh, some chipboard and some Lindy's products, okay? So I'm going to have a bit of a play. So for those of you who don't know what Lindy's are, Lindy's gang products are fantastic. There's a couple of different products on the market um, in regards to Lindy's products. There's sprays, there's magicals, and there's embossing powders. Um, I currently stock sprays, embossing powders, and the magicals. And it is my job as an educator for Lindy's to show you what these guys are all about. This product and this product is exactly the same product, just in a different container. So when you open up these lovely little powders, they look like that, and they're just a powder. So they are, hello, Amanda. Um, they are a pigment dye based powder, which means that the pigment means that they are full of color. The dye means they are permanent and or have a permanency to them. And the uh, powder means that you need to activate it to get the magic to happen. So we're going to use them today. I'll quickly show you, I'll do a quick little demo and show you um, how, how they work. Um, and then we're gonna go straight into making a canvas using chipboard and uh, rainbows so the shakers are fabulous I've done so many live Facebooks on uh, Lindy's you can go back through my YouTube channel uh, or you can go back through Facebook and have a bit of a look uh, there's a ton of, of information so this is the shaker so the shaker is exactly the same as this product all right so they have a scoopy side with a big hole like that and they have a shaker side. Um, Lou, when you go back into that room, would you grab me a set of the magicals, please? And I will... Which one? Just any, any flavour. Um, okay, so then they have the holes there. So what you can do with these is sprinkle them on to your paper. Now, this is a watercolour paper piece here. It's a six by four. And I'm just lightly tapping it on just like that. Uh, and as you can see, there is a not a lot of whole, whole lot of powder on there. Sorry, I'm just looking at the comments. Can everybody hear me, except for Deb? Can everyone give me just a quick thumbs up if you can hear me, please? Make sure I don't have any sound issues. You can hear me. Okay, fantastic. Sorry, Deb, you might just have to jump out and come back in again. All right, so back to this. We have got, I've shaken some, shook, i added, sprinkled to this piece of paper some of this blue. So this color is called Bavarian Blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate it now. So just using my water spray, I'm gonna activate all that powder. See what's happening? It's bloody awesome. Very glitchy today. Okay, anyway. So, here we go. So, there we go. The more you add, more water you add, 
the more the pigments come together, the more you make a solid color like that. So you can make some fantastic backgrounds. With the pots like this, these are exactly the same product, but they are in a little pot. So what I quite often do is, and I will be doing today, is I will be using a dry paintbrush. Hang on a minute, let me just straighten that paper out. There we go. Um, dry paintbrush and sprinkle it on just like that, just a little. You don't, a little bit goes a really, really long way because it's so heavily pigmented, right? You put the lid back on straight away because you really don't want to accidentally spill it. And then I still need to activate that powder. Can you see that goodness? Looks pretty great, doesn't it? So they are really, really cool. So they are not a watercolour powder, and that's super important. The only thing that makes it look watercolory is the fact that I have added water to it, all right? So it is certainly not a watercolour powder. This is where this product is different to all of the other ones on the market. Now, there are some on the market at the moment that are very similar. So just be aware, if I was to let that totally dry and then I can add some more colours to it, it's not going to reactivate like some of the other brands will, all right? So what I thought I might do is show you a couple of things that we can do with Magicals, okay? Um, I have used them before on numerous different projects uh, live here on, on Facebook. This is one that I did with the last online show and I used the Lindy's sprays and magicals to create this piece. You can go back and have a look at this through my YouTube. So because it is a pigment dye based powder, you can add, you can add it to anything to activate it. So what we did is here for the stenciling, we added it with modeling paste and made colored modeling paste. So instead of buying low quality colored modeling paste, which you can actually purchase, um, I make my own by doing mixing some powder in with the modeling paste. So that's what we did here. We also used a Lindy's Gang spray in the background here. We painted it on here. There are some uh, fabric doilies here that we colored those with the Lindy's. We did a heap of things with this, all right? So that is just, it's one of my favorite pieces. And the shine on it is just amazing. So really, really nice. The other, another project I've got here is a much bigger canvas and it is using the Magicals and we have got stenciling in the background, collage paper in the background, but I have used them in more of a lighter sort of tone to create some really cool effects with modeling paste in the background. With chipboard, this is quite an older project, but you get the idea. I've also painted these feathers, which was a stamp. All right, so, and it still has a shimmer, and this project is probably five or six years old. I love it. Um, I haven't put a date on it. All right, so let's get into it. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be working with rainbows. So I'm going to be adding some colors into little palettes here and I'm going to make up some washes of, of color. So I have a range here of magicals. Um, when you purchase Magicals, I sell them a couple of different ways. You can buy them in a set like this. This is the best of value for money, okay? Um, so a set like this is called Autumn Leaves, and the Autumn Leaves set has got one, two, three, four, five colours in it. Um, crimson, Autumn Maple Crimson, Tibet, Tibetan Poppy Teal, Cattail Copper Brown, Ponderosa Pines Olive, and Red Hot Poker Orange. So they've got awesome names as well. Um, how do you open one of these? They don't just pop off. You need to get something in there like that and lift it off. Okay, so for storage and transport, they work very well. 
So they are available. And of course, they're 15% off. So I have one of the little Nuvo spoons here, um, and I'm going to add some magicals to my paint palette. So I'm going to be making up a little wash of colour. Now, you don't need very much, but I'm going to make up a, a nice amount here just to show you. There are magicals available that are flat with no shimmer, and there's also some with shimmer. So this one here, for example, is a flat magical. You can see that it says flat just above the, the tip of the spoon there. Uh, this one here, oh, and that colour is called Pineapple Paradise. This one is called Tears on My Pillow Tangerine. And as you can see, the powders look a bit gross when they're like this, but it's when we activate it that the magic happens. All right. Um, I want a little bit of Rizzo's Rowdy Red. I like to use a combination of the shimmer and the flat ones. Today I'm using, I've got probably more of the flat ones here than I do the shimmers. Um, and it's really not gonna make much of a difference. There, I just won't be as much shine on the top, but it will still work. So that is Hibiscus Rose. And this is out of the Caribbean uh, Crush set. Um, do I want those two pinks? No. I might keep, I've got to put all the blues in that side and I'll keep the pinks and greens. So I might grab some of these other colours. Um, and so I can also take these ones. So this colour is called Guten Tag Teal. And I can just shake that into, well, that one's nearly empty. Oh, and that's way too much. So when you put way too much powder in, the good thing here is I've got this little spoon. A little bit goes a really long way. But I also want some really intense colours today too. So, um, all right. Um, Lederhosen Laurel. So as you can probably tell, the staff at Lindy's have got a German heritage. So Lindy's gang have been in operation for over or nearly 25 years. Um, and you and they are a family business based in Washington, um, Washington State. So they are they've always been a family business. Since uh, Lindy passed away, the her wonderful, wonderful daughter. Tracy has been running the company um, and I have worked alongside Tracy and the team for many, many years. I am a huge fan of Lindy's and a big, big believer in their products. Um, having worked in this industry now for what feels like a million years, um, did I do that one? One, two, three, four. Maybe I did. Um, yeah, so having worked in the industry for what feels like a million years, um, I, I only use one product that does absolutely everything. Um, Monica's just asked the question, can you use Magicals with a stencil? Uh, why can't you? That's my, my question. The answer is yes, of course you can. You can do anything. Anything at all. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I have my cup of water here and a pipette, and I'm going to activate these. So because they are all pigment dye-based powders, it's now just this fun bit of activating them all into the little whirls and getting all of that magic color to happen. And at this point, you'll be able to see which ones have got the shimmer and which ones don't. So all of my greens have shimmer. My yellow does not. My orange does not. My hot pink does not. And my red does not. Oh, that's bright. 
and my purple certainly does. All right, so before I do anything else, the very first thing I will always do is I use the end of my paintbrush and just give them all a little stir to get them all activated. And then I swatch them to make sure that I am happy with my, my colors. Now the, in the background here, you'll notice I have a, a puppy training pad and that is because this can be a little bit messy and I do like to have something that's gonna soak up the water, all right? So it is not a hospital continence pad. <laughs> um, it is a puppy training pad and it is something that I've been using for years and years and years and it works very, very, very well for this purpose. So I'm just making sure that all of my powders are activated and mixed in quite nicely. So I can mix these with water, I can mix them with paint, I can mix them with modeling paste, I can mix them with gesso, I can mix them with gel medium, I can mix them with hand sanitizer to make like an alcohol type ink. I can mix them with everything. The only thing they are not designed to do is they are not designed to go into a spray bottle and become a spray. Because what happens is these have a bind. These have a binder in them that will bind the pigment to your spray bottle nozzle and clog up your nozzle and make you swear like a truck driver. So Lindy's do a, a spray as well. So they are designed to go through a spray, uh, a spray bottle, okay? So, oh, those colors are very similar. Did I put those out twice? What did I use? I might have. Okay. My orange is super vibrant. My yellow is super punchy. That's hot pink. Red, very punchy. Deep, 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 dark pink. And finally, purple. So they are the colors there that I have created. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my swatch off to the side here so I can use it for reference. And my sprays, uh, sorry, my <laughs> sprays, I just said sprays, didn't I? That's why I said it. Magicals are right there. Um, I've got some chipboard here from Dusty Addict. So this is Dusty Addict chipboard. And what I have done is I have coated it with gesso. So I just used a little makeup wedge and coated it with gesso just exactly like that because chipboard is porous which means that it is going to soak in the color so to give you a bit of an example on here if i do that versus that you can see what's happened is the color is going to soak right into the chipboard uh, and if it's got gesso on top, it's going to resist the chipboard, okay? So that is why I have done that. When it dries, which I'll pop that aside to dry, it'll uh, be fine. So that is what the deal is with chip chipboard. Because it's porous, it's going to soak in that liquid. So I quite often like to gesso it first. I have a 8x10 canvas here. And what I want to do is I want to add some color to this canvas. I have already added to it my lumps stencil with modeling paste to give it a bit of a, a bit of body, a bit of a pattern. And I'm going to start puddling on my color. 
All right, so I'm going to keep referring to my swatches here. I'm actually gonna take that down the side because I wanna move that. Let's go over here. And get a bigger paintbrush. So I want a paintbrush that's gonna hold lots of liquid like this one. Um, what I'm actually thinking of doing is keeping the chipboard white, but I'm not really too sure yet. I don't have too much of a plan. Um, and I've got some embellishments I want to stick on. So I'm going to start puddling on my colour, just getting it on like this. And what's happening is it's just a canvas. Uh, I've got a water spray. Where's my water spray? Here we go. And I can spread it around a little. And I want something really, really bright and punchy. So this is just an eight by 10 primed canvas. Okay, I'm gonna overlap these slightly. So I'm using the orange. Don't really know where this is going. I haven't really thought too much about it. Um, I'm gonna put red over here as well. I'm just gonna create something with lots and lots of color in the background, like so. Now, Magicals being a, a pigment powder and a dye-based pigment powder means that quite often, if you spill this product on your clothes, it's going to stain your clothes. It is a dye-based powder. So naturally, that means if you accidentally get it, lean over the table and dip your boobs in it, it's going to stain your t-shirt. You can dye ribbon with it. You can dye fabric with it. You can add You can dye all sorts, lace and all sorts of bits and pieces. So you do need to be aware that it will dye your hands and your fingers until you wash your hair next, or the cat, or your husband, or whatever you're washing next. Um, so I'm just gonna be pushing some colors into each other. I'm not wanting to step outside of my color wheel too much. I love this hot pink but I don't want to put it near the because it's very purple based I don't want to put it in too far next to that yellow because it is going to muddy up so I'm gonna pop some more red over this side and I can push the red into and the pink into the yellow and the purple can kind of sit in the middle here And I can add some water to spread it around a bit. And just drying it off in between just means that you are going to not get it to be too runny and your colours can sit where they are. Um, Chrissy's just commented, I love how real your visuals are. Oh sweetie, you've nailed it. This is real. In, this is this is me at, at, at my best and quite often my worst but you know honesty comes very very naturally to me and telling it how it is so I'm just drying as I go just well not totally drying just taking that dampness out of it just to make sure that I don't get too much bleeding around all right I do like that purple. That purple's got that nice shimmer to it, so I'm going to pop some more of that back on. And it's pulling in and around my modelling paste. So now I'm going to crack into some blues and greens. I'm going to start with blues next to these colours and go down to greens, simply because we don't want to make uh, like yucky colours, yucky colours, you know. Yucky colours. We don't want to make brown. 
So working in a smaller area will enable me to control it a little bit. And I keep rinsing my brush off every now and again. Got a couple of other tools here. And I'm being, a, I'm being very patient with the colour. I'm making sure that I'm patient, you know, you know. Using a round brush like this enables me to control the water as well. So as you can see, I'm taking the colour and puddling it on and then just giving it some direction with my, with my brush. Just intensifying some colours up in that area up here. Now, these are super fun to play with. If you are going to play with them with small people, I highly recommend putting them in old clothes and doing it on a tiled area that you can mop up. Because like I said, it is a pigment dye based powder. It also means that if you drop it on your carpet and your cute little bulldog runs through the house with it, then it's going to be a permanent addition to your carpet if you don't vacuum it up immediately. Because if you wipe it up with a baby wipe, you can imagine what happens. All right, so I'm gonna bring in some green now, which is a much lighter color. And I'm going to push that up to here. And this is a much lighter green. I'm going to push that across the bottom. Working on a flat surface will stop it running all over the place as well. Um, so my trestle table here isn't the flattest. It's working, but it's not an ideal situation. And for some reason today, I can't talk and concentrate at the same time. Oh, sending your love, Carrie Ann. I'm just going to leave it at that, babe. All right, so there we go. So I've created a, a lovely little layered background here. I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to see if I can intensify some colour. And I love that it's pulling in and around my 
my texture paste areas and way too much heat around my puppy training pad <laughs> So up in this area here, it's gone from blue to orange. What I would like to do up here is I'd like to add some more intense orange. And perhaps a little bit of red. So they have faded down a bit because my gessoed canvas is sitting on top of that really well. So I'm just gonna crack through this very quickly and add some more intense color. Because my chipboard and perhaps some embellishments is gonna sit on the top. Now I'm just going to add some splatters because I can and the splatters also help with the, um, the colour intensity as well. You know, in those days when everything just takes that little bit longer to dry. Today's that day. So it's about being gentle with your colours as well. So naturally I'm taking my time with it. I'm watching how the water reacts with it and making sure that it's getting a, a nice blend of colour. I'm trying to not muddy it up too much. I'm trying to make sure that it's all working really, really well and blending in together quite nicely. If it's not, I'm just taking a little bit off with my paintbrush off the side while it's wet. Don't let your heat, heat gun get too close to your paintbrush because it will make all your bristles disappear. And I'm just going to pop it aside. I'll bring it up to camera to show you. And then I'm gonna pop it aside and work on my chipboard. Oh, it's hot. I knew that. Hello, Tina. How's those sheeps going, babe? Looking good. All right. So here I have got my, my painted chipboard. So what I wanna do is I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna keep it white. So I'm just gonna make sure that I get all of these little elements aside and I'm gonna push my chipboard out. Uh, so these are the chipboard rainbows from Dusty Addict. So they attic, <laughs> not addict, it's not addict. Uh, so I'm going to push those out, push those out, push those out. So that's rainbow number, two, rainbow number two. And I want to use the clouds out of rainbow number one, just because I can. Um, I 
wonder if don't be a pain. So chipboard has uh, little connectors to hold them into the board. So when they don't just pop out, you need to get a knife and just cut those little connectors out and then they will pop on out. Like so. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with these clouds yet. Radio. Radio, radio. So these bits also have pop out bits. So I'm just going to run my knife because the gesso sponging on there kind of work like a glue to hold them together. So. Um, I think I almost want to keep them in. Maybe. Let's just test it. And again, all the little connectors are there which hold those inserts in place. So you do need to grab your blade and separate them. All right, let's have a look. Let's have a look here. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take those bits out. So while I'm doing that, what can I talk to you about? I know um, a lot of you are part of my online classes and join in with my uh, online art journal classes. Um, for those of you who don't know, once a month I do an online class and I film it live on Facebook in a private group once a month. So what that means is that you can go back and join in on any of the classes and watch them back at your leisure. Now, I will create a project at my speed and talk you through it just like I'm doing here, but naturally it's a little bit more uh, in depth. But you can go back and watch it any time. You can watch it, pause it, catch up. You can, they, they don't have a time limit on them. But what it means is, yeah, you can pause me, you can mute me. Muting me could be good. Um, you can go back and do a homework page and go back and what, and you know, do some more um, create another project. So you can do so many things with your art journal class and they are designed for beginners through to advanced. Okay. I also do a art journal for an art journal basics class as well. Now this is a three part class that you can access at any time and goes through the basics, goes through what you need, goes through what you don't need, uh, tells you how to use certain tools, what sort of journals to use, all of those sorts of things. So if you have a look online on nataliemay.com.au, under the classes tab in the sidebar, you will find all of the classes that I have taught in the past. Some of them have a, a kit that we will post out to you. Some of them don't have a kit. So for example, the class for November was a technique class. There was no kit involved in that one, but it was a fantastic page that was, um, was a heap of fun and how to work on certain techniques. So take a moment to have a bit of a look through. The class for December, um, there's a great little kit with that one. If you have a bit of a look at that, we are sending out a little kit 
and you will totally love doing that. Um, and then you get plenty in your kit as well for a homework page. Oh, look, people are reading while I'm cutting, writing. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The classes are great, but you're far behind, Karen. You know what? And the cool thing is about being behind, it's not a race. You don't have to keep up with me. You just need to allow yourself the time to go in and learn. It's all about allowing yourself that time. Um, and the good thing is, is you can go back and watch it at any time. You've got access to the Facebook groups regularly and they are easy to find. Okay, so I can send, I send you the link once you sign up and we make that happen. But I do know that there's a lot of very happy ladies out there who have learned, learned to create more confidently because of the art journal classes. If you are here in South Australia and you are in Adelaide, then you are certainly welcome to come and join one of our face-to-face -face classes. I do the art journal class here on a Wednesday, then again on a Friday night, then again on a Saturday, and then I teach it online on Sunday. So there's always an opportunity to suit someone, like, a, like for you to come here in person, and possibly even join in and uh, join in our small group. We only have eight in a class, which is ample face to face. All right, I'm just taking the last wetness out of this, the dampness, because I've got a couple of bits here that just need a little bit more drying. Seems to be taking forever. All right. Let's get this happening. So what I would like to do is I want my rainbow to go here. How am I gonna stick that rainbow down? Uh, I have got some silicon tape. So the silicon tape is like foam tape but it is clear silicon. It is super sticky, like ridiculously sticky. And I'm just gonna pop a little, and I apologize if I'm doing it off camera, but it is just, no, no. Doesn't help that I've got dirty fingers and nothing. Okay, there we go. <sighs> right, that bit's on there. Scissors. So the clear silicon tape, oh my God, it's so sticky, is perfect for this because it's clear and it lifts it and gives it height. Get on there. All right, do I want clouds? Do I want those clouds? I think I do. Oh, they're so cute. I ripped that one. Alrighty, excellent. I'm gonna leave them white so that they stand out. Uh, I'm just gonna grab this stuff and get it out of the way because my next thing that I'm gonna do is I've got a packet of the Vicky Booten Color Study uh, Color Study Die Cut Ephemera, which is this one here. Code is 685 and it's got all of these lovely little 
bits in it and I thought I might add them to my page. Um, I'm just going to let those clouds sit for a second because I haven't worked out where I'm going to do it and I'm going to put a title on. My title, um, Dusty Attic has some fantastic titles that I've put in a safe place. <laughs> you know, you know that safe place? Here we go. You colour my world. Rainbow is my favourite colour and rainbow vibes. Uh, I'm going to add one of those on as well, but I haven't worked out which one. So let's have a look at these little die cutty bits. I've got the colour ones here. Crayons, paint tubes, paint, paintbrush. The pencil tin. Maybe I need this as well. My favourite colour is rainbow. Okay, that will need to go there, there. Right. So I'm actually going to add this off camera. I'm not going to do it right this very second, simply because there is only so many hours in a day. And you guys, uh, I want to come back and do a, another live Facebook this afternoon. So I need to allow myself time to tidy up because you know how you bite off more than you can chew. I'm nailing that today. <laughs> All right, let's just commit to something here and stick it down. So I'm just popping some tape behind my paintbrush. And the only reason I'm using the silicon tape is because I'm too lazy to go and find my foam tape. Okay, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. But I'm lifting them up to, so that they all have a little bit of height. Stick, stick, stick. Right, and that also stuck down that um, cloud at the same time, which was kind of cool. Then this is going to go here. I'm just going to use foam dots, that's better, because that's quicker than me arguing with the foam tape. And I think you'll all agree. Um, so the, the special that we have on for today is the chipboard, scrap effects products and Lindy's products and they are all at 15% off, as well as all of your Christmas things. Anything Christmas related is also 15% off. Uh, so we have got so many very cool things available in online. There's some great kits there as well. Um, hello, Alison. Right, done, done, done. This is going to go down here, and then I'll pop some crayons down in there, perhaps, maybe. Where's that roll of foam tape I have? Oh, I found it. Stop looking. Smack that on there, smack that on there. The more I fluff around and think about it, I find the worse it gets. So I'm just gonna commit to the stick. Are you watching, Louise? Are you watching Netflix?
glue, glue, glue. Oh, it's not looking too bad. Why, thanks, Louise. I appreciate your professional opinion. I have put my glue somewhere safe. Yes, I am. Oh, you know, it's because I'm sick of this. It's because my, um, I'm sick of the sound of my own voice, actually, Lou, to be honest. Did you hear Louise just tell me that I'm being ditzy? I'm not being ditzy, like I said, I'm just sick of the sound of my own voice. But that's okay, that's what happens after, a, oh shoot, after a three day show. I don't know about these crayons. I don't like doing it on that angle, they kind of need to, maybe I'll go there, there. Thanks, Karen. Crayons are on now, babe. I've committed. That's that 20 second delay. It's too late. They're very erect crayons. They're very erect crayons. Yes, they are. No, it does need the crayons. Look, it's on there now. There's no choice. Too bad. So you have sad. The full box. Yeah, I do have the full box. Right, I've got to stick down the um, clouds, right? So the clouds are just going to go on with a touch of uh, the sticky glue from Art by Marlene. They are going to work just fine. One there. This one here that I broke. I'm going to whack that one there. Oh, everyone has an opinion. <laughs> and that's okay. Let's just hold that down with scissors. And then this one is going to go here. And what's going to happen is my title is going to sit over this one. Because I need to cover up that tape. Right, 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 right. Now, something else that's going to happen as well off camera is I'm going to add some glossy, oh, just stick here, son of a gun. I'm going to add some glossy accents to them. Uh, what colour do I do my title, since everybody has an opinion? Thoughts, people? What do you want to do? Thank you, Susan. Susan, what do you think? Purple. <laughs> Deb, it's not going to happen, babe. It's not going to be purple. It's a hard no from me. I'm thinking that it's actually going to be in aqua, in blue. All right. I like blue. And because that was still wet, of course they haven't. Pink. Oh, blue. Okay, blue was my answer, actually. Thanks, Susan. Um, wet sticky dots. Yes. All right, so there we go. I'm going to add my title on off camera. I'm not gonna bore you with those details. Uh, thank you very much to everyone for tuning in. I will be back here again for my last live Facebook of the day, and I will be using the Lindy's sprays to 
create an, uh, a, a scrapbook layout. So I'm going to, I need some time to tidy up in here before I make my next mess. Um, but the, I'm gonna do a Lindy's layout. So I'm going to use chipboard on, uh, for a scrapbook page and a whip a little something up this afternoon and I will be back here in an hour for that. Um, so jump online to nataliemay.com.au, get yourself some Lindy's, get yourself some sprays, get yourself some Magicals or some embossing powder and, and start getting a little bit inky. Have a play. Use the things that you've got, guys. I know, it's, it's a bit of a novelty, but you know. Um, take advantage of the no judgment postage and um, yeah, thank you so very, very much to everybody for tuning in. Um, and I look forward to seeing you back here in an hour. I will finish this project off in a moment, take a photo of it and pop it up online uh, for you to see and link the products. And then you'll be able to go onto YouTube and watch it as well. Thanks guys. I look forward to chatting to you soon. Wash your hands, kiss your kids, do the things.